it going guys? Today I have a video about surfboard jigs, specifically ones that I 3D modeled. If you're trying to build a surfboard, probably something that you're going to run into, unless you do glass on fins, is you're trying to figure out how to install the fin boxes, especially if you're a beginner or even if you're not, you may not have spent the money on a futures installation kit or an FCS fusion installation kit. Now, there are ones out in the market now, such as, and I reviewed this one previously in another video, uh, the Greenlight Surf Supply Future Style Installation Kit, and they have installation kit for other systems as well, including for the center fin. So this is a great system. I highly recommend it if you don't mind spending the money. This isn't actually all that much. It comes with a router base, including the router bit, and it works with this Makita trim router this style here. There's two different types. This one's the corded version, and then I also have the cordless. And by the way, I highly recommend you get the dust collector with it. That totally minimizes the amount of foam that gets thrown up when you're routering out your uh, fin boxes. Okay, so what do I have in front of me here? Well, this pile of 3D printed templates jigs that I have here are templates that I've designed so that you can install handles, vent plugs, leash plugs, another vent plug, you get the idea, fin boxes, so these are future style, a Bane box or the USA style, the regular, you know, future style. So how do these jigs work? Well, Essentially, what I've done is I've designed these custom router bases to work with two different types of bits. I've designed it to work with a quarter inch um, straight flute bit and also a three eighths bit. Look at that, that one's nice and long. It's really great for routering out deeper things like uh, this sup handle for instance. So my recommendation is to go with the 3 8 The collet on the Makita routers are a quarter of an inch. And I totally highly recommend the Makita routers. I'll put the model numbers of these in the description below. Back to how it works. You change out the bottom base plate with four Phillip head screws and you just screw on the 3D printed base that I designed. So from this one here, it's the 3 8 And what that does, is it works like how an inlay cutter or inlay bushing works is once i put it on the router here you take your template in this case this is a square sup handle template and it rides up against the, the jig and all you do is just router out you set the depth and then you router out your i guess hole for the handle so i've designed a whole bunch of them and I'll just go through them really quickly. I have this oval one here for a futures oval leash plug and it has an insert as well. So this is for the flange and then this insert is so you can router out the slot of the leash plug. So this jig works with, works for this futures style plug or this futures plug. This is a genuine plug. So it's got a flange and then it's got a slot on the inside, very similar to their fin boxes. Incredibly strong because you're glassing over this so it's really hard to pull one of these out even though it's really tiny. This is my preferred style now. Um, there are other ones so I've made templates for for this old style futures plug as well. This is I believe a 33 millimeter one. Uh, this is like a 25 millimeter generic leash plug from AliExpress. So I have all of those right here. And again, it doesn't matter if you use the quarter inch bit or the three eighths uh, inch bit. You just have, a, just need to install the correct plate. This guy here is for the futures. So this is for the flange of the box. And then this is for the insert. And I've included indexing marks so it helps you line up the, the jig on the board once you get your locations all marked out. This one here is for this really cool looking sup handle that I found on AliExpress. This is definitely hard to install if you didn't have a router. 
Now, and again, you don't have to have a router. I've installed these with just a Dremel and just was really careful and marked them out and then just eyed it. You know, if you're just doing one or two boards and you don't want to install, use a template system or don't want to spend the money or the trouble, you can totally do that. I've also done, I've also made templates out of wood. This one's for the flange of the futures box. And uh, I just used a conventional inlay bushing kit for a router. Um, I believe this is like a quarter of an inch. I think it works with the, the, the template that I've designed here, this jig. So you could totally do that as well. Cut this out in a jigsaw, mark it out, kind of roughly estimate um, the distance between the bit, the center of the bit, and then the edge of the bushing uh, with that kit. So you could do that yourself. Anyways, so back to the ones I've printed. I have the Futures One Shot. These Futures, uh, I guess, single fins, but they're also used for track boxes for, say, a hydrofoil. They have it in multiple sizes. I got a bit of a mess going on here. They have these uh, in multiple sizes. This is a 10 and a 3 quarter inch box, and this is an 8 inch box. Uh, I've utilized the same template for both, or the same jig. So you print off and glue together. You will need to glue together the longer ones, unless you have a really, really large 3D printer. But I did size these to print on a very conventional 3D printer, say like an Ender 3. What you can do with this is this is for the flange, but if you want to say, do the eight inch one, you can just add in this insert like that. And that works for the eight inch box. So it minimizes the amount of filament and just kind of extra jigs you have laying around. And then again, the insert can go in like that for the slot. And then for the 10 and 3 quarter, again, same thing. And also, just like the other ones, they have index marks to help you align on the board. This one here is for a Bane box, the USA style. So that pretty much uh, sums it up. I will post links in the description down below to links for all of these for you to print. Uh, and hopefully they'll come in handy for you. I'm starting a website where I'm going to post all of my playlists, videos. I might put some written information down on surfboard building. So that's going to be at uh, geckosurfboards.com. Oh, and say for a hydrofoil, I even printed out this track box template, which is the proper distance for the plate for a hydrofoil. To make a track box like this, of a piece of high density polyurethane foam. I use this template to router this out. Oh, and I haven't forgotten about you FCS fans out there, the Fusion style boxes. I have a couple on order. My preferred system is Futures, but I do recognize a lot of you guys probably like the Fusion system. So I'm going to cat up some of those and design and post those as well once I get them. So stay tuned. Anyways, that's it. It's pretty simple. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Right here at the end of the video, I will just post a quick little video of me routering out a fin box, just so you can see how it works. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. I have multiple boards on the go, still working on the poly board, just haven't had time. I got this other all-in-one foil board I'm working on back here. I still have yet to really learn how to foil. I'm hoping this year down here, I'm also gluing up some foam sheets to work on uh, an all around surf sup. So yeah, all kinds of projects on the go. So thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. So what I'm doing here is I'm taping down the jig using some masking tape. What you could also do is use like a grippy mat and glue it to the bottom to keep it from moving as well. Now, what's really handy is to have one of these dial calipers or a veneer caliper or a digital caliper to measure the thickness and then add eight millimeters to the thickness that you measured to the given fin box or leash plug or what have you. That eight millimeters is the thickness of the jigs that I designed. Then you see here, I'm gonna use the rear end of the dial caliper to measure the depth of the router bit. 
I'll use it to set it like I do right here and then I will lock it in place. Also, you don't have to use a caliper. You can also just use a ruler. Then I flick on the vacuum to help keep the dust down, which is really awesome. And then when I do my plunge cut, I very carefully lower the router down into the foam, being careful not to hit the side of the jig. If you are going to be routering into hard materials like wood, don't do the plunge cut. Pre-drill a hole for the bit first, set the router bit into the hole, and then turn on. A couple quick passes, shut it off, make sure the bit comes to a complete standstill, and then remove. And then now I'm measuring the flange for the futures box. And then again, add eight millimeters to it for the thickness of the jig. Now, the depths are standard to the fin boxes, but I do prefer to measure them each time because depending on your setup or tolerances with, 3D, with the 3D printed jigs, they might be slightly off for everybody. So it's just best if you just measure it each time. And again, I router it out for the flange. And then I do a test fit. Now, if you were doing this on a real board, of course, you would properly um, mark where the fin box would go properly with the alignment marks that I've included on all the jigs. And there we go, perfectly installed. Okay, we'll do another one here for the, I believe, vent plug. These ones are a lot simpler because we only need to set the depth once. Also, another reason for measuring each fin box or plug is there can be variations in thickness depending on if you buy the genuine ones or knockoffs. You can install them deeper to cover the opening or install them higher and sand them open. Experiment and see what works for your application. Again, I love this vacuum attachment. Be very careful to do the plunge cut. A couple quick passes and we're done. Okay, I'm gonna do one last one here. I'm gonna do the Futures Oval Leash Plug. Again, using the rear of the dial caliper to set the depth, lock it in place. Very careful plunge. I remove the insert. Then I measured the thickness of the flange. Add eight millimeters to it. Set the depth, lock it in place. Plunge in router. This is more passes than needed, but a little insurance. And we're done, perfect fit. Remove the jig. A 
look how great that is. Nice, perfect fit. Oh, also, I got this FinCant jig that I also modeled up and I'll post for you guys to download. And I got a few other little things like spacers for the fin boxes that I also will post on my site. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.